everyone today we're going to be talking about a tool that literally just released yesterday in lightroom classic it's the generative remove tool so we're going to test it two ways today one we're going to test it removing stray hairs with some very serious edits and we're going to also test it removing some items and people and objects from backgrounds that are actually quite large to see how good this thing does spoiler alert it's actually so good that i'm no longer going into photoshop and then back into lightroom uh, to remove objects anymore. All right, so we're here in this new photo. And as you can see, there's quite a few people that need to be removed in the background. So let me just put my color grades on that I did. We're gonna go back over to our generative uh, remove here. We wanna remove this girl over here. And this is gonna be hard because there's uh, vertical architecture with horizontal um, bevels in it, as well as a staircase. This one, uh, this big guy right here who needs to be removed, there's an archway here with some doors and windows. And there's another photographer back here taking some graduation photos of someone else um, and some people walking. So we want to get rid of those. And so let's kind of like see how this does with that. And we're going to paint this out. Remember, oh, oh, don't do something like that. Don't be loosey goosey. Because we need information that's still here. So it's going to pull from spots within our current image to replace with so like it's gonna try and generate it's gonna use our own image as reference so uh, like if it catches this arch it's probably gonna reference over here for it and some other stuff in its learning model um same with the uh, archway here and the staircase so that's why we don't want to be super loosey-goosey we only want to remove the spots that we need especially because this is uh this is out of Princeton University. So this is a pretty like recognizable spot. Um, so people would realize like, hey, if I got rid of this big circle here, people would be like, that's not what that building looks like. So we want to be, you know, kind of close. Uh, so we want to be kind of accurate. So to generate this, wait for it to apply. And we'll have a few different instances where we can go in and play around with a few different things. If we don't like how it comes out on the... Uh, first pass. Sometimes you do get a few little like wonky uh, artifacts in here or like it'll generate an entirely new person um, if you're trying to delete a person, which I find kind of odd. Um, like over here, it just made this this person into a completely different other person. So, um, but actually um, the good part about this, like we said before, is if you click on any of these instances here where the eraser tool is, we can come through and... Um, edit some of these things. And if you don't want them to be fully gone, you can actually bring down the opacity, which this kind of looks like maybe some ghosts are there, but I'm not going to mess around with that one. I want to keep it at 100. Uh, generative AI, we're going to look at some different variations here to see what they give us. Um, that one actually got some of the stanchions. That stanchion at first glance looks okay, except for that it like comes out across the sidewalk. Um, that one looks a little bit better. Um, but I'm actually going to go with that one, uh, our third option. This one, let's see if they give us a clean option with this person over in the corner. No. So we're going to refresh that one. Or we can delete. And I usually give it one refresh. And if it doesn't get the refresh right, then I go through. Um... Yep. So what I'm going to do is click on that one. Hit delete. All right. So... Let's try and delete this person right here. Maybe it's because I uh, thought I was zoomed in all the way and there was like a tiny sliver uh, of the image that was cut off. So I was leaving part of her in there. So let's make sure we get rid of all of it. Okay, let's just try deleting this guy now and see what happens. See if it wants to help me out. As you just saw, like you can paint over things that have already been removed, which is really cool. So that's the little trick there. But this is really cool. Like it gets the uh, kind of base of the architecture here, similar angle. Um, it gets these horizontal bevels in there and it continues the vertical line all the way down. Um, I am super duper pleased with these results. And I would say that this is a final image that, you know, we give to our clients. Yeah, super happy. Let me know what your thoughts on it are. I just see this being super beneficial to us. Like, it's not replacing us, 
it's replacing people in our photo we don't want there. Because before, like I said, you'd have to go through and edit all of those finals that they chose. And maybe that's like 25 pictures. Um, and, th you know, 25 pictures. And it, pro it used to before Photoshop's, you know, AI tools, it would probably take me about 10 minutes per picture um, going in with clone stamp into removing it. And the results were not nearly this good. Um, especially an image like this, I probably would uh, have like not given this as a potential for a final um, shot. I intentionally chose one um, that would have been really difficult um, and how quick that was. That probably took us about five, six minutes. So real quick, if you like the way that my photos are color graded, uh, my presets are for sale down in the link in the description, as well as links to all the gear that I use, as well as some discounts to a few companies that reached out and wanted to offer a discount to some of my viewers. As you can see, we've got some hair here um, that's kind of distracting. Um, we have a lot of flyaways um, and things like that. And this would be a really hard edit in the past. This would take me like quite a lot of time if I had to take it into Photoshop and use clone stamp tool. Even generative fill in uh, Photoshop would have taken me a long time. And we're going to brush out some of these stray hairs. And now the cool thing about this um, software feature here is that I can actually do multiple instances of painting out different areas and as long as these areas don't connect with each other um the computer or, or lightroom will treat it as uh several different instances of things that need to be removed and replaced and so um that's really helpful if you've ever used uh, adobe photoshop's generative remove tool because sometimes it gets parts of uh the removal correct and it just kind of like whiffs it with others. So it's really good to have a few different spots that you can go in and change rather than trying to get it all done in one pass. But as I've played around with this thing uh, late last night uh, and this morning, um, I've noticed, like I said before, that it, it'll do something really cool. And I'll show you what that is in a second. All right, so what I also want to do is see how I grabbed a little bit too much here. I want to come in and I want to like get rid of some areas. So the way I'm doing that is I'm just holding my option or um, key down or um, I think that's the Windows key maybe if you're on uh, PC. So I'm just going to get rid of some extra area that it doesn't need to try and, and refill because I want this blend to be... Uh, pretty seamless. I'm going to get rid of these gnats or whatever these things are here that are kind of distracting. Uh, let's get rid of a few more things there. All right. So after that, we're going to hit apply and uh, it's going to generate. So if you have an older computer, this might take a few minutes. Um, if you have a very powerful computer, it might take a little bit less time. Um, but the more you select, the more it has to do, um, it's going to take a little bit longer. So just give it a second. It's worth it because no matter, even if it takes a really long time, it's still faster than using clone stamp tool and all of the other tools that we used to have to do year, for the past several years before AI really started being integrated into our software. All right, and as you can see, it's done loading and it did a pretty great job. And now in here, you actually can still visualize your spots. So you can come back and forth if that's helpful to you. Um, and you also get three variations. So, and what's really cool about the variations is see every removal tool that comes up here. You actually have three variations for each of those instances. So this one, you know, Actually, I like that a little bit better because there always are some like stray hairs and uh, no one's hair is absolutely perfect. Um, so, you know, sometimes a clean line actually doesn't look that great. Uh, so you can actually come through and check out your your different visualizations here, which is really cool. I kind of like that. I want to see what other options we have here with this one. Oh, that's uh, that one's really good. Uh, we can actually come in and add some more or we can kind of like. Um, 
and then it'll apply. And I want to see what it does with this little piece here because it looks like a little snip came off after the fact. Um, but as you can see, you make smaller selections is a little bit better. And that's pretty, pretty good right there. Um, one thing I will say is if you uh, zoom in just a little bit, you will notice that um, some of the like natural grain patterning that's in every camera, if you zoom in close enough or you get a print printed out large enough, you'll notice it. And so you can see it here in some of this bokeh. But then if you come down where it generated some of the new stuff, it's uh, it doesn't quite line up perfectly um, around the hair here. Uh, but we're... Oh, but we're zoomed in and we're like pixel peeping here. Um, so right here, yeah, you can definitely see the green pattern and kind of like falls off there. The only thing I think that would make this better is if you could treat this like a mask. So Adobe, please get on that. Um, because I want to add a little bit more noise to this to make it blend in. If I were going to get it printed out, there's like a, like a huge uh, canvas print. So let's zoom out. As you can see, like if, if you're just viewing these on a computer or they want like regular size prints, this is going to be totally adequate. Bef so let's so let's look at our before and after. So that's our before and that's our after. And that took us all of like five minutes to do. And that's with me explaining it. So the more we use this tool, um, we're going to get faster with it. If you have a good computer, it's probably going to be really fast. Um, and, you know, this is, you know, a lot of people say with AI, this is like, still in its infancy so like it's only going to get better from here so thank you so much for watching please hit subscribe if you like this video or if there's any value add that would really help me out as i'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers also let me know in the comments what other kinds of tutorials you want to see in lightroom photoshop um, or using camera and all that other sort of technology to edit photos or take photos thanks so much for watching we'll see you in the next one